Most folks trying to save a friend's life would have ridden hell-bent for leather from Howe's tanks to the salt country. Sean Keegan knew better than that. Well, some might also say he was just one of Purgatory City's jackals. And jackals didn't have friends. And they didn't risk their own necks to save anyone. And Sean Keegan couldn't quite reject such an argument either. Keegan had ridden hard at first, on a direct trail that led to the Sea of White. But then he moved well off the path and made a wide loop to the east. Crossed those flats, and he knew he could find himself in the same predicament Breen might have ridden into. Upon hitting the rocky country, he had also cut a wider loop until he approached what he figured would be the most likely place for two ruffians to set up an ambush. After dismounting, he wrapped his horse's hooves in rawhide. That would deaden the noise the iron shoes made on the rocks. He drew the spring field from the scabbard and walked the horse into the wind. That would also carry any noise the hooves made away from where the two men might have set up an ambush. Dread filled his throat like bad whiskey. Chances are Jed Breen was already dead. The buzzard circling in the sky soured his stomach worse than the whiskey he had consumed at Howe's. But if those vermin kept flying, that meant something or someone was not yet dead. It's cooler, we figure, up in those mountains than it is in this hell. We oui, that would be muy bueno. I'll be damned. Easy, boy. What are you up to, Jed? He turned, slipped around the rocks, found a path up the slope, and made the climb. He ain't moving. Godless coward. Killed himself. Un bon blog. Pero es el diablo quien ríe. Jed Breen ain't one to take the coward's way out, Merle. He's trying to get us out into the open. If not for that damn tree, I could kill him easy. Vamos a dejarlo. Dole Luis un mortlente. Can you say something I can understand for once, Merle? Keegan found his spot. He saw the horses the two killers had staked. He saw the bottle of whiskey they had been sharing. He didn't know who the hell these two men were, other than one went by the handle Merle. But he knew one thing. There was about to be just one of them. The one not named Merle was wiping his mouth and shifting his rifle in his other hand when the bullet hit him in the back of the head. Keegan then dropped the smoking carbine and pulled out the Remington revolver, firing at the other man. The funny gent who spoke a mixture of languages... Keegan fished out a brass cartridge and reloaded the Springfield. But by the time he got to the edge of the rocks and stepped over the corpse of the man whose head he had mostly taken off and aimed down the slope, he saw the smaller man running across the salt fields. Keegan found a comfortable perch on the rocks, aimed the rifle, and tried to figure out the adjustments he needed to make. The wind, shooting downhill, the shimmering of the sun and blowing sand... How fast the coward was running. Then he saw something else. Behind the dead tree in the center of the vast expanse of salt. (laughs) You are a hard man to kill, Jed Breen. Breen didn't know what the hell was going on. He heard shots, screams, and now a man was running right toward him. (sighs) Holding the lightning with both hands, Breen pulled the trigger. (laughs) Mon Dieu. Bebo morir. <laughs> By the time Breen made his way to stand over the killer, John Murrow was staring at the buzzards. But he couldn't see him. Oh, fret. Them buzzards see you, my friend. Then he saw something else. A man in a tan hat standing high on the rocks, with sunlight reflecting off the rifle in his hands. Breen! You already owed me plenty. Now I'll be collected from you till the cows come home. Keegan? Before he could say anything else, Jed Breen dropped his coat and pitched forward into the salt. Oh. 